Thank you, Miss Lindsay, Agent Lindsay, and music team. All right. Uh, I've asked a few people to help me uh, for this time, so if I have talked to you about helping me, please come down and sit on this front row. Uh, if I haven't talked to you, then it's not you, okay? All right. So this week, we have talked about Agency D3. What's the first one? Discover. So when we discover, we're looking at stuff. What's the big E word we've been looking at? Evidence. So we're, when we discover, we're looking at the evidence. We're finding the evidence, and then we got to figure out what does the evidence mean? What are we trying to see, or what is the evidence telling us? So that was discover. We talked about that the first couple of days. And then the next day, we talked about what? Or the next, the next word? Discover. Decide. So once we see all of what the evidence is and what the evidence says, we are faced with a decision. We must choose. We must make, make a choice. Boys and girls, third graders. We must make a decision what to do with the evidence. In the case we've been talking about this week, we've been talking about Jesus and the fact that that we learned some things about Jesus. What are some things that we learned about Jesus? Somebody tell me something. What did we learn about Jesus? He died on a cross. I heard another one. He lived. He died on the cross. He rose from the grave. He's God's son. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good. All right, so we learned several things about Jesus, and all of these things that we learned about Jesus point us to one truth, and that truth is that Jesus died on a cross because he's God's son. He died on a cross so that we could be forgiven from our sin. And Pastor Michael talked about yesterday, flying the plane, he had to make a decision to turn away from something and to something else. And, and our evidence tells us that we have to turn away from sin and we have to turn to Jesus. We have to do something with the evidence, right? We talked about the flashlight. It's, the evidence is no good until we do something with it. We make a decision. And then today we've been talking about defend. As Pastor Keith talked about, the last part of our verse says, or the, the last part of our verse says that we are to, dis, to defend the hope that is in us. Let me pull it up. Okay. Always be ready to give a defense. So defend something means that if you are going to defend something, you have to know it well enough to be able to explain it to someone else. So if someone comes to you and says, what do you know about Jesus? You have to know about Jesus, know the evidence we've talked about this week enough to be able to tell them what you know and what you've decided to do with that evidence. That's what it's talking about. We have to give a defense for the hope that's in us. That's Jesus. The hope is Jesus. We have to give a defense. We have to be able to explain the evidence. Okay? So we have to explain the evidence about Jesus. That's what it means to defend. And as Pastor Keith said, we need to do that in love and gentleness and kindness. We don't, we don't want to make people angry by the way that we say it. But we need to be able to say it and tell people that we love Jesus. We've looked at the evidence. We know what all of the evidence means. We see it, and in all points, to Jesus. Now, if I've asked you to come help me, please come up on stage. Because one of the reasons, one of the ways that we can be prepared to defend the hope that is in us is by memorizing Scripture. Okay, everybody come over here. Uh, you're up here. Where's my first, second, third, fourth? Do I have... Who do I have up here? I'm missing one. Okay. All right. So, Pastor Keith jumped a little bit ahead of me, and that's great. I'm glad he, I don't, what was your name? Was it? Ashley. Ashley did a fantastic job. Now we're going to, I'm going to test these guys right here to see if they can also say our memory verse, because that is the best way that we can prepare ourselves to give a defense for the hope that's in us, to defend the faith is to memorize scripture. All right. So what's your name? TJ. All right, TJ, let's see. Can you say it without looking? But honor the Messiah as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. First Peter 3.15. Fantastic, TJ. Great, TJ, great job. All right, what's your name? Baron. Baron. 
All right, Baron is going to now say it for us. Speak loud, okay? But honor the Messiah as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. First Peter 3.15. Great job, Baron. All right, and finally... Hepziba. All right, Hepziba is going to say it for us. Here we go. First Peter 3.15. But honor the Messiah as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Great job, Hepziba. All right, so I, I brought them up here to show you that any of you can do that. Oh, we have our, our fourth grader. All right, here's our fourth grader. What's your name? Katie. 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 Here we go. Ready? Nice and loud. But honor the Messiah as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason that, for the hope that is in you. Great job, Ashley. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You said First Peter 3.15. You got it. Okay, so the reason I brought them up here was to show you all that you all can memorize Scripture. Every one of you can do it, and these guys are just like you. So the best way that we can give defense for the hope that's in us, the decision that we've made, is to memorize Scripture. The Bible calls that hiding God's Word in our hearts. So I want to challenge you, after VBS is over, after today and after family night tonight, challenge yourself. Ask your parents for help. Ask your friends for help. Continue to memorize Scripture.